Good evening, student administrators, faculty, and staff, and welcome to the 2020 Knights Lead Conference. The Student Government Association and the Office of Student Engagement and Leadership are excited to provide students and the Newman community with the Knights Lead experience that is educational and empowering. My name is Bailey. I am a junior, class of 2022. I am a Knight majoring in pre-athletic training. Tonight, I serve as the evening student host. Hello, my name is Angel Rogers, and I'm a member of Newman's class of 2022, and I'm majoring in English. Tonight, we serve as this evening student host. This year, Knights Lead Virtual Conference has been built with this goal to encourage us all to recognize our leadership and inner strength and mobilize our knowledge and skills into agency in our community and world. We understand that throughout the world, there are social, economic, educational, and political un unrest and strife. What is seen on television and social media is not distant from many members of the NU community, but it is part of our everyday reality. And reverence for all humankind, SGA and Alessa Gale, wanted to be sensitive to personal challenges, personal challenges members of our community face as a result of COVID-19 and the racial injustice that is faced by black and brown citizens of America. So throughout the Knights League Conference, we have powerful and proven leaders that will encourage the souls, enlighten our minds, and inspire our hearts to grow and persevere through the challenges. And thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Breder constantly teaches that the student leadership is a constructive process and infuses personal experience, identity, environmental elements, and learned knowledge. As we constantly build the night lead experience at Newman, SGA, and OSEL, thought it was best to develop a student leadership panel and particular the SGA Senator for Leadership, Ashley Beasley, and President David Chartel for tonight's idea. Before we get started, I would like to welcome our panelists, ask that they go around and introduce themselves to our to viewing audience and those who will watch the recording. Today's informal and an opportunity for the students and alumni to have to have an open and authentic conversations around the leadership path, leadership and impact in today's global and domestic climate. Tonight we have Angel Rogers, Ashley Diamond, Olivia Fritz, Jeffrey Wilson, Elizabeth Perez, and alumnus Mark Blount and Nafis Norris. Before our panelists introduce themselves, we welcome the president of Newman University, Dr. Doom, to share a few words. Thanks, Bailey and, and Angel. Thank you so much for hosting this. It's great to be with you tonight. Uh, to to uh, yeah, exceptional uh, students here and great alum. Uh, uh, Mark and Nafis, it's great to see you both. Um, we um, we're in a we're in a moment at at in our lives, and and certainly we, as you say, it's it's uh, on the water's edge at Newman University in terms of how we want to deal with this, the issues, and they're they're multiple. And and I think uh, beginning the academic year around this notion of leadership and inner strength that we all uh, bring to the table and. Um, recognizing that everyone has gifts and talents, recognize that everyone has a voice, that everyone has a story, and their life story is, is important and valuable to each of us and to our Newman community. Uh, at Newman, we recognize that. And the best way to start as a leader is to recognize that in each person that you encounter. The most important thing, I think, in, in leadership, the first and foremost, is listening. Uh, as we become better listeners of the world around us, our own inner heart and value system. Um, sometimes I think we don't listen to our own hearts. We ignore those things that I think sometimes um, we probably shouldn't ignore and we should address them in our own ways. Here at Newman this year, uh, we're going to continue to tackle uh, in the best way we can to keep our campus safe through COVID-19. We have worked tirelessly this summer to make sure that the Newman experience for our students is going to happen. Uh, and my intention, and I have great faith in our students, our intention is to keep our campus alive, functioning, vibrant as much as we can this year uh, without having to, um, to move to online instruction again. We don't want to do that. Some schools have made that decision. We want to try to keep our campus safe. And I believe um, because of your leadership, because of the student leaders and the confidence I have in you, that we can pull this off and we can do this, um, unlike some other college campuses. Um, also in the area of, important area of 
of racism and the area of com really combating racism and bias and injustice to people, our black and brown um, friends and colleagues and students um, face so much, so many challenges of injustice in their life. And we need to tackle that. We need to take it head on as a university community. And we need to join forces collectively to help combat those issues. Um, our, our mission and our values at Newman University asks us to do that. And I would go back to my earlier statement. I think our hearts and our minds are asking us to do that as well. Not just asking us, but really demanding it of, demanding it of us. And so as student leaders, you play a central role in those two pieces that I just mentioned to you. I, um, I am the president of Newman University, that's my title, but I cannot do these things alone, no one can. Um, and the other piece uh, I would say that is a, so important to leadership is taking on a sense of humility. I just admitted uh, here in front of all of you, I'm the president, but I can't do all this alone. And I think it's really important to take on that sense of humility in our own lives. And as leaders, I think that's central to, to how you interact and how you listen and how you care for each other. So I applaud you for this leadership conference. I, I, you have my full support and encouragement. Uh, I think as student leaders, we're really developing our student leadership program on our campus. I really, uh, um, lots of credit to uh, Dries, and Janae, um, Ms. Ryder, who's done a wonderful job of coordinating these activities. Uh, the entire student affairs team uh, under leadership of Dr. Haug, all everyone who's been supportive of this and certainly our alumni and our student leaders wanna thank you all so much for, for tackling these issues and being a part of it. And um, I look forward to a great year. Uh, thank you so much and God bless all of you. And, uh, appreciate being with you tonight to kick it all off. Bailey, thank you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Jones. All right, now if our panelists would like to introduce yourself, so you can go around, say your name, do a year, what your student leadership positions are, and anything else you would like to say. Um, Ashley, would you like to go first? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Ashley Diamond. I am currently a senior nursing major with a minor in theater arts, and I am currently the president of the Newman University Players, and I also am on the executive board for the Boogie Nights. Now, would you like to explain a little bit of each are, like what Newman Players are and what Boogie Nights is for anyone that doesn't know? Sure. So the Newman University Players is part of the theater program at Newman, and pretty much what we do as a club is we give our members more opportunities to perform besides the two shows that we do every year. So we do like recruitment events together. We all have team bonding and Boogie Nights is one of the dance clubs on campus. Nice, nice. All right, now Olivia, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, hi, I'm Olivia. I'm a junior psychology major and I am a wellness educator. Okay, so, no oh, sorry. Um, a wellness educator, we kind of serve as the bridge between the counseling center and campus life. So. Um, you can come with us and we'll kind of lead you to uh, go to the counseling center and get any help that you need and deserve. And also like um, with the different campaigns that we do, like the suicide awareness and the love better campaign that we do every year. Um, we kind of are the voice like in between both of those. Mm -hmm. All right, Jeff, how about you? Uh, how's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Jeffrey Wilson. I'm a senior sport management major and marketing and business mi administration minor. Um, I am the new president of the Sport Careers Organization, uh, which was formerly known as the Sport Management Club. Um, so we changed it to Sport Careers Organization because we didn't want to feel like it, we would only allow sport management students. Um, and basically what we do as a, as a sport, sport career organization is just kind of try and get people involved and, you know, do whatever we can to help them along their paths to hopefully upon graduation be able to place them in a, a job in the field of sports business. Nice, nice. Thank you, Jeff. All right, Allie, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'm sorry that I'm like driving right now, but um, my name is Allie and I am a political science and business administration double major. Uh, this summer I became a new night coordinator and before I was a new night mentor, but I got moved up and um, I am on the dance team, so yeah. 
Perfect. All right, then we have two alumni with us. So Mark, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me here for, um, on the call today. Um, my name is Mark. Um, I'm from Philadelphia. Um, I'm a Newman and I'm like class of 2015. Um, I served as a Newman captain for the men's basketball team all my years at Newman. Um, after graduation, I um, decided to take my professional level. Well, I played professional basketball, traveling with the Harlem Globetrotters. Um, while I'm traveling with the Harlem Globetrotters, I'm also involved um, in a boys and girls club back home in um, the North Philadelphia community, serving as a camp counselor in the summertime. Also, I am a private security guard for private events, um, local club bars, um, some security guard. Um, I am also part of the president's advisory with Dr. Domes um, Council for Diversion, Inclusion and Equity. Um, I am also a realtor. I um, own my, my first property um, back in like March um, and I am also uh, a trader within a foreign exchange market. Wow, that's amazing. You do a lot. <laughs> all right, and then lastly, Nafis, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, that was a lot, brother. Um, <laughs> hello, everybody. Um, I'm Nafis Nars, um, class of 2020. Um, I was a resident assistant there for, I believe, one year. I was also track and field team captain, also cross country team captain. Um, for the two seasons that I ran there. Um, currently, after graduation, I am studying um, bioprocessing, biopharmaceutical engineering at Jefferson University. And I am also just got hired at Jefferson University as a entry level scientist that is working on a vaccine currently for Alzheimer's. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you panelists for introducing yourselves. So now we will begin with the questionnaire. Angel will ask our first question. All right, so this question is for Olivia. Um, leadership development is an ongoing process that requires great internal processing and external influence. What lessons have you learned the most since assuming the leadership role as a student or in your career? So what I learned most is probably that no matter where you come from, uh, any background you have, that you can learn to be a leader and be a really good one. I also learned that um, leaders doesn't mean that like you're alone, kind of like what Dr. Dom said, like you can ask for help and lean on other people. And that just overall makes you a better leader, in my opinion. Great. Thank you. All right, Allie, this question goes for you. Leadership requires confidence, but also courage. There are a lot of things we encounter, carry, and have a rec and have to reconcile. Can we all talk about if we are afraid to stand up and assume a leadership role? How do you overcome this fear? Mm, okay, so I would say overcoming fear is just well in a leadership position would be from having confidence. So have, having confidence in your role, knowing what your role is and knowing what your obligations and responsibilities are and living up to those um, responsibilities and things that you know, you're supposed to do. So I know that sometimes being a leader can put us in you know, some hard situations because sometimes like, we don't really wanna be like the bad guy or we don't wanna be seen as anything negative. Um, but I would say that overcoming fear would just be having confidence and just knowing your role. Nice, nice. Now, Mark, for you, what do you, what would you say as a way is like overcoming fear with obviously all your leadership roles and now being an alumni and having like different positions outside of school? So how would you overcome your fears with all these roles? Um, I can give you an um, example. Um, although I've been involved with um, many organizations, like many teams, many organizations, I can talk about my first um, for I went to like a conference with the um, Forex. My first conference, um, they divided everyone um, by ranks. And when they did that, since I was fresh, I was like the fresh uh, new meat, and my group was very big. Um, so they asked a simple question of why are we still, why are we here um, where we're at, like in life at this current moment, in life regards to like, regarding to the foreign exchange market. A simple question requires someone to speak. No one stood up and, and as much as, like I wanted to let, I wasn't going to let that opportunity slip. So I wanted everybody to hear what I said. So although I was nervous, I didn't let it be known. 
I overcame that fear the moment I started talking. So the, the more you speak, the more you can overcome like, anything. Nice. All right, so the next question is for Ashley. How do how do you believe this courage should be activated to deal with the racial, social, economic, and educational discrimination in our country? And also, what influence, how like what influence would you bring about to bring change? So one of my strongest skills being a leader is communication. And I think that's really important today with everything that we're facing, because we need to be open and honest when we're speaking with everyone that we interact with. And communication, it's not just you talking. It's not just how well you speak in public or how well you speak to someone on a personal level. It's also about listening. You need to be able to actively listen and not just say, oh yeah, I hear what you're saying. You need to actually hear what they say, take it to heart and see how it can be applied to you. So that's why like communication is one of the most important skills that we have as leaders. And being able to just stand up and say, I know, this is what should be happening and this it's not what's happening being able to communicate that in a way that's going to get across very well and being able to listen to what someone else has to say to you is one of the ways i feel like we definitely need to approach situations today thank you um nafis how would you go about bringing about this change nafis all right. Sorry, I accidentally muted myself. Um, so courage is basically activated, uh, for me, is act activated by our voice. Um, and not just uh, using our voice with our mouths, but with our actions, because you can say a lot more just by doing a lot more. You can say a lot more with your actions. Uh, for example, the protesting, the uh, marching, showing up at our rightful seat at board meetings and having these discussions. Um, personally, the one thing that I'm doing um, to bring about influence is most times, you know, especially as a black man, um, they think the most that we can do is fiddle with a mic and, you know, play with a ball. But as, you know, in the world, there are only 8% black men in STEM fields. So it's just of, you know, trying to show excellence that there are other ways to be leaders, there are there are other ways to you know influence you know with um, excellence and resilience and optimism, and that's what I've done you know being a scientist and um, just being a, a living example uh, myself of overcoming the racial challenges of being you know at a company that has 500 scientists and I'm one of four blacks. You know what I mean? So it's just showing with your actions more than your voice but also use your voice. Thank you. All right, Mark, what type of char character behaviors and attitudes do you believe are critical for effective leadership? Um, I would say the ability to understand the needs of each of your team members. Let me say that one more time. The ability to understand the needs of your team member, because not everyone is the same. So mm -hmm. understanding that you have, you have to move differently um, when it comes to your different team members. Perfect, I agree with that. Now, Jeff, what type of characters and behaviors and attitudes do you believe are critical for effective leadership? Um, so one of the things um, that some of my professors have really touched on um, over the time here at Newman about leadership is having emotional intelligence. Because um, I think the best way to progress and be successful as a unit is to understand the needs and you know be able to communicate effectively with each member of your team. You know, I if, if I'm the leader of the group, I have to be able to come into work or come into a meeting or whatever, and look at someone and, and realize like it doesn't look like they're having a good day. Like, how can I kind of cater to them? Because realistically, as a team, you know, you can't afford to have you know one person you know not working. So ultimately. As a leader, if, if you can understand how people are feeling, understand you know, what, what can create that job satisfaction for them, you know, what, what creates you know, that feeling that they really wanna wake up and come to work every day. Um, I think if you can, I don't even wanna say master, but if you can just have a basic understanding of that, then um, I feel like you could be a very successful leader. Now, as a sports management major, you obviously have to do a lot of interns. Now, do you see this a lot of the workplaces you intern? 
<laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll give you an example. Um, last fall, I interned at NBC Sports Philadelphia, and my um, my who was supposed to be technically my main boss for it, um, I really didn't have any interaction with him at all. Um, and it was kind of like shocking to me that like he's my boss. He's the one that signs my paperwork um, to mm-hmm. say that like I, I did the internship. So it was kind of mind blowing to me to see that um, I didn't have any interaction with him. But the the guy who was right below him ultimately ended up being my boss. And, you know, every day when we came in, he would come over, check in with us. There was three interns and it was it was never just like, hey, here's what you got to do for the day. It was always, hi, how are you? How's your day? How's classes? Um, he always knew if we were kind of getting stressed out with school, especially around like finals week, it was like the work that they gave us was always less and less because he understood himself. You know, he was a former student. So he kind of put himself in our shoes and realized, you know, it gets tough around these times. Um, and he was always checking in with us. You know, he would send us texts over the weekend, you know, just, you know, he'd wish us good luck on finals and stuff like that. So I think he was like the greatest example I've seen of emotional intelligence, you know, firsthand. Um, he always wanted to make sure that we had a good day and left on good terms with him. That's amazing. Thank you. All right. So this question is for Mark. Um, how will we demonstrate and influence not only our generation, but the generations to follow, given the national ethical and moral lapse that we've witnessed in our leaders? I would say um, repetition. Um, the more we pay attention to the younger generation and, and mold their minds mentally, then in the future it will pay off and rub off on others because of energy is is very much contagious. So whatever you put into the generations is what you'll get out of it. Okay, thank you. Um, Ashley, how do you plan on influencing the next generation? So I know, especially for my club, since I'm graduating this year, my main strategy for like developing the next set of leaders is just to communicate with them and kind of guide them. So I'm using this year to train my old vice president, who's now my co-president. I want him to be able to feel like he can run the club without me, because if he can't, then I didn't do my job well as a leader. Being able to help mold the next set of leaders is so important, especially in such a small club that I run. And being able to have open communication with him all the time. Like every time I make a decision, I always talk to him. And having that open communication is so important. And I feel like that can be applied to like bigger situations too. Thank you. All right, Jeff, this is a question for you. What advice would you give a potential student or student leader? Uh, Some advice I would give to them would be to come attack challenges with an open mind because I think a lot of times when someone gets thrown into a leadership role they kind of think that they have the answers for a lot of the problems that they're going to face um, so I think the best you know skill that I've adapted since becoming a leader and even interacting with other leaders is um, like it was already mentioned earlier is to actively listen um, you know I, I know myself that I'm never going to have every answer and you know if I just kind of sit back and ask for help and, and listen to what other people have to say then I know that you know together people can probably get to an answer and my other advice to them would be to educate yourself on the topic at hand you know I don't think you should ever come in to a meeting or come in to speak to someone and not really know what you're going to talk about. Um, it's been one of my biggest takeaways as a leader. That's great advice. Thank you. All right, Nikki, being an alumni and being a recent Newman grad, what advice would you give a potential student or student leader? Uphold your posture. Um, because there will be uh, many times as a leader where you want to snap. Um, you want, especially uh, for those of you who are watching that are RAs or orientation leaders, trust me, you are going to want to snap from time to time, especially dealing with parents. Some of you RAs who are watching, you just had move in days, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I can say for me, I learned how to hold my posture um, because I, I will wear my emotions on my sleeve so much. And um, you know, I would snap in an instant. I would start, you know, just fussing and murmuring, complaining. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you never know who's watching you 
um, because they could see you going through a tough time, but some people need to see that inspiration. Um, some people need to see that, that, uh, that correct posture that you hold up, you know, when in tough times. And also, I don't mean to go to Bible study, but in the Bible, it says, uh, Proverbs 29, 11, that fools utter, you know, that fools, um, give their full vent and rage and the wise bring calm in the end. So meaning that if you start snapping out and then you turn around and you try to give somebody advice, it's, it's going to be completely void because it's just like, they're not going to want to listen because mm -hmm. it's just like, okay, why are you telling me that everything is going to work out and just stay calm and it'll get better when you uh -huh. get through all of this stuff just now and you snap. So you can't, you know, you can't tell somebody to do uh, whatever, that you want them to do when you're not doing it yourself. So always uphold your posture. Um, always, you know, cause you never know who's watching. And at the end of the day, you just have to pretend everybody's watching because at, that's what it is as a leader, especially on Newman campus. I mean, for crying out loud, you go to, you know, class with 3000 kids. It's a very small campus. It's like you're on TMZ every day. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So. No, but I very much so agree with that, especially this summer being orientation leader. You very had to keep your calm and posture, especially with the times we live in. Some people were something else, but I agree. Keeping your posture is like the best number one advice out there. So thank you. All right, so this is a question for Olivia. What do you believe it means to be a student leader at Newman University? And what can we change or improve, or improve about the student leadership development? Um, to be a leader on Newman's campus is honestly a really good privilege and I get to learn more about myself that I didn't even know and just like I constantly get like these personal lessons over and over again and it just surprises me each time. Um, I think I also learned to um, like lean on people more and trust myself honestly. I become more confident with like my own thoughts and my own answers to questions and solving problems and stuff. And so overall it's really helped me. And then me feeling better, I was able to help other people too. Um, personally, I love the amount of leadership potential for everybody at Newman. Um, if anything, I guess just um, putting out like more not notice like letting it be known that there are positions like kind of everywhere on Newman's campus like really just showing that you can be a part of this big community. Thank you um, and Ali so your leadership you know role kind of just expanded um, so what does it mean to be a student leader on Newman's campus? I would say being a student leader on Newman's campus is being inclusive now that's kind of like a very broad statement but i would say be inclusive with like well as an orientation orientation leader i was dealing with like incoming students but then also my like co-workers being inclusive with thought like um ideas and different you know how to approach different things i think that's something that any leader can kind of attest to when it comes to working with others and um also with being on, like an orientation an orientation leader specifically, I would say that just having an encouraging vibe, I guess you could say, to always just encourage people to go to, go be like you, I guess. So I would encourage like the incoming students, like, hey, this could be you next year. Um, and, you know, just kind of spreading the word about it. So I think that's something that um, leaders have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Allie, this question goes to you. How well do you feel prepared for, the, for leadership in the marketplace, such as workplace, graduate school, or beyond? Um, I feel, I'm, I'm going to be very transparent. I don't feel like the most, like, you know, prepared, only because this was my first year as a student leader, and considering that the new night coordinator role kind of came to me abruptly, um, it's, it was hard at first, but then I kind of got used to it. But I think I have a lot, a lot of space to grow. But I do think I can, you know, I think I can say that I have some, a good amount of experience now compared to like back in July when I got my position. Um, but as far as, you know, in the professional world, I think that 
this position that I'm in and then all the leadership positions on campus, I think are very helpful when learning how to talk to people, learning how to work with others, learning how to, you know, use your voice and, you know, execute the vision that whatever you're working in or whatever your goal is that you're working towards, I think that's something that I have gotten prepared for, but I definitely think I can grow. And I think that as leaders, you're never done growing and you can always improve on what you know and expand your knowledge. All right, thank you. Okay, to the rest of our panelists, anyone can answer this question as you please. How well do you feel prepared for the leadership in the marketplace? Um, <clears throat> I'll go. So um, I'm gonna talk about how with everything in life, from like childhood to high school to college, they will teach you lessons. For me, it was um, on the court, off the court. Um, example, Sister Marguerite, my freshman year, she would see me. She would see. She would see me in the hallway with um, headphones on. And so with headphones on, as she's talking to me, I would have them in my ear. But nothing would be playing. But it's the respect and the principle that that followed behind it. So I took out my headphones, and from that moment on, like. It was a lesson learned for every time that I encountered someone and I spoke with them, I would just have my earphones off just to show that respect so that they know that I'm listening to them. So, mm -hmm. and another thing was, um, was um, on the court about being on time. Um, my coach told me Lombardi time. He ain't saying anything about it. He just said Lombardi time. So, when I looked it up, it was um, Vince Lombardi. He's a famous football coach uh, from mm -hmm. back in the day. And he wanted his players um, to be there 15 minutes early. If you're on time, like if you're there, like if the meeting starts at 4 o'clock and you're there at 4 o'clock, you're late. Always be, always be there 15 minutes before. So, you know, because if you're late, you're on time. And those moments molded me into a great leader that I am today. Perfect. I agree. Thank you. Would anyone else like to answer our question? I will. So I honestly do feel really prepared to be a leader once I leave Newman because I've been a student leader at Newman since my freshman year. And I have worked so hard over these past four years to develop leadership skills. I have always gone to the leadership conferences. I do what I can to build myself. And mm -hmm. before coming to Newman, I was like that quiet, shy kid that sat in the front of the classroom that no one really talked to. And coming to Newman, I was able to find a group of people that helped me really break out of my shell and find where I was actually meant to be. Mm -hmm. And I feel that being a leader at Newman has prepared me for my future career as a nurse, especially because, like I said earlier, the biggest skill that I've taken away from being a leader is the ability to communicate. And as a nurse, I need to be able to go into my patient's room, communicate with them, make sure that I actually hear what they're saying to me. They know that I'm confident in what I'm saying to them. So I honestly do feel prepared. Yes, perfect, thank you. Okay. Would anyone else like to continue and add on? I, I guess as an alumni, I better answer this question. <laughs> um, but um, I can say Newman, um, I, if I'm being transparent, um, uh, Newman uh, academically, yeah, but, um, can you hear me fine? Yes. Okay, I see you looking into the camera like you were trying to listen hard. Oh, no. but, I was reading that. <laughs> You're good. But um, I can say, you know, academically, it, it did a solid job. I had to do some extra stuff. But um, <clears throat> I, I can say it prepared me because, like, before I got to Newman, I was in a box. And that mm -hmm. box was called the hood. Um, so... I really wasn't around different ethnicities until I got to Newman. When I got to Newman, um, it was the, it was my first time being around different ethnicities, being around, you know, you know, rich and middle class and, you know, different classes of people. And like my first time being around the LGBT uh, community. Um, and it was so new for me. And yes, I was raised in a, you know, a home that, you know, taught me respect and love for everybody. But um, it was my first time, like, really working with people of all different types of backgrounds. And Newman was honestly the perfect place for me to go to get that experience. Because even working in the labs, 
Like you don't know these people, you're meeting them for the first time and you know how to socialize with different people and all types of people of background. So it prepared me greatly for that. No, I agree. Cause I was like the same way when I came to Newman. Cause like being from like this area, you kind of get used to like your own little group. And like when you come to university, like especially like a small university like this, but you have so many different types of people, so many different diversities. So like it really does open up like your mind and like your eyesight to everyone. And honestly, it was like a really good experience getting to know others, getting to know other people's backgrounds, like stepping in their shoes to see where they come from and to get more of an understanding of them. But I feel like Newman does a really well, like good job, like getting, allowing students to know other students to really get to know them and like become close friends. And especially because you get to know everyone on campus being small. So I totally agree with that. Do you, do you want to go to the next? Yeah, you can go there. All right, so this is also open to all panelists. If you could speak to influencers of our nation, including policymakers, social influencers, and those in the field working to develop future leaders, what would you challenge them to do? Uh, um, I'll, I'll jump in oh. if you want. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Oh, are you sure? Okay. All right, so I would say like for social influencers, I would say that they, if I could like tell them, you know, just uh, like something, I would tell them they need to utilize their platforms a lot more. And I feel like they are utilizing their platforms, but for the wrong, okay, I'm not going to say the wrong things, but I'm going to say things that aren't as important. So, you know, common influencers, they're showing, you know, clothes and shoes and all the materialistic kind of things. However, they're not speaking on social issues. They're not speaking on laws that are being made. They're not speaking on just, you know, um, societal issues that we're having, especially in the past, you know, few months, there has been plenty of things that they could be talking about that they haven't. So I would say that social influencers, they need to really use their platform a lot better than they are because I think that it's not, they're not using it for the right thing. They're using it for kind of not bad, but they're using it for things that don't matter as much when, you know, we have things such as humanity on the line at this point in our society, you know, with the racial injustice and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, there are these people who have millions of followers or millions of people who, you know, watch what they do, yet they're not speaking on you know, those things, I think that's a flaw in the social influencer industry, if that if that's what you want to call it. But I think that's something that they need to do better. It's something um, they need to really use their voices in ways that matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to touch upon kind of the same thing that she just mentioned. Um, really, over the past couple months with all the issues taking place, um, I think the people who have done the best job of utilizing their platform has been athletes. Um, but like she mentioned, there's so many social influencers that, you know, people of younger generations like idolize. And it's almost to the point where, you know, if one of the Kardashians does this and it's like all these little girls want to do this. Well, how about if, you know, a Kardashian, you know, post something about, you know, defeating social and racial injustice, you know, maybe it'll inspire the younger generations to kind of follow in those footsteps because, you know, to me, I think the ultimate way that we can create change is just to inspire and educate the younger generation because I don't want to say that this is 100% true, but to some extent, it seems like the generation before us is kind of hard set on their own thoughts and their own ways of life, whereas, you know, our generation and the generation after us are going to be the ones that kind of inspire and, and create this change to, you know, hopefully unite and, and better the world. I just have um, one thing to say um, to piggyback off both of them. Challenge them to focus more on character development and then professional development. That's all I gotta say. Does anyone else want to speak? Okay, well, um, I honestly feel as though this isn't just like a like social influencers. Like I also feel like it's more like 
our actual political leaders because even with like all the protests that have been happening for months now it feels like the only thing we've really gotten is like oh well black lives matter and they painted it on a whole bunch of streets and like you know cities but we haven't had any actual like policy change like so nothing has actually come up this and we did we have had like where in some states they decided to ban kneeling which I think is effective or even chokeholds, which is effective, but it hasn't been a nationwide thing. So I feel as though the change we want to see is not what we're getting. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I feel like there's been a lot of words, not actions. Um, you know, everybody says that they're in support of this cause, but at the end of the day, it's kind of what are you doing to, to further the cause? You know, it, it's one thing to, you know, tweet Black Lives Matter and, and retweet these things, but it's another thing to donate to causes, be out and protest, you know, um, educate yourself and then educate others. You know, I think that's one of the biggest flaws is people are trying to educate others. But realistically, it's like, do you understand the issues and, and the history of it and how you can make a change? Because once you understand that, then you can go ahead and influence others and educate them on the issues and try to, you know, take that first step to creating a change. And if I can um, piggyback off uh, what you said there, um, you know, like, for example, you said take the, you know, the time to learn about others. Um, I, I challenge them to give, a, give us their time. Um, you know, take the time to learn every, especially with the, the Black Lives Matter movement, because there's, there's so many assumptions about how we feel and everything, and they assume that, um, you know, a donation is going to work, a donation to this company, you know, we, we've gotten so many donations to Black Lives Matter movements and stuff like that. But you also get millions of dollars to cancer research and, you know, we still have not found a cure yet. So therefore, you know what I'm saying, money is not going to really solve anything. It's the intangible things that we need to do, which is step in, take the time to learn, you know what I'm saying? Take the time to, you know, see what it's like in our shoes, take the time to have these conversations and take the time to have these uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversations. Take the time to discuss the policies that need to be changed. Take the time to see how somebody feels in all different groups of races and, and people and everything like that. So I challenge them to give, give us their time. And then our last question is, before we close, and this is to all panelists, before we close, are there any other thoughts you would like to give to our attendants and release into the atmosphere? Um, I can go. Um, I would say, like, for anyone watching who isn't a student leader or, you know, is interested in being one, but you're kind of scared, I would say just do it. I think that, like, for me, I was scared that I wasn't going to be able to fulfill, you know, the responsibilities of my, um, my position. However, I've gotten feedback saying that I've, you know, done pretty well, you know, considering that this is my first year being a student leader. And I would say that it's helped me learn so much as far as leadership development, but also just learning about other people and working with other people. And now I have developed some friends. So I would say that this is a good like professional and social enhancement, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I think that's something that um, I would I want for the viewers to take out of this is that if you you know want to be in a leadership position, just take the chance because I'm sure that you will definitely gain something positive from it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else like the answer? Yeah, like if I could, oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 please, ladies first. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, I would just say if anyone's, like, wanting to be a leader on campus, and if you see, I know personally, like, even me, if I'm in my blue polo and you don't know where I work on campus or what I'm doing, come up and ask, and I'll tell you about the Wellness Center, and I, tell, I can tell you how you can become a wellness educator, how it's changed my life, and then you can go on and change other people's lives, and I feel like other student leaders probably feel the same way, like, you could just go up to them and ask like what position you're in, um, like where you go and how you start the process. I feel like we're all kind of open to it because at one point we were that person. And so just kind of creating like um, a safe and a personable like uh, campus and just people in general and just saying that like we're, we're here too, like you can just come up to us and ask. 
-hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I was just I was just basically going to say, like, challenge yourself. Um, you know, if you think you might be uncomfortable taking a leadership position, well, I, I'd like to say challenge yourself because the only thing it can do is just help you further down the road. Um, you know, I don't I don't think anybody who takes, you know, the easy route through college is really going to come out with a lot learned and gained from it. Um, I think if you challenge yourself to kind of break out of a shell and, you know, become comfortable with public speaking, become comfortable with doing, you know, Zoom calls like this, then, you know, I think you're better off, you know, down the road. Um, and if this is something that interests you, um, like Olivia said, like if you see me wearing like my sport career shirt and like you don't know what that means or like what it's about, you know, feel free to ask me because I'll give you all the information. You know, you're welcome to come to our meetings. You know, we'll include you in, in our group outings and everything along the lines of that. Perfect. Thank you. Ashley, Nafis, Mark, Angel, anyone, do you have any other feedback you would like to give? Exactly what he just said about like stepping up like on a Zoom call. Like I got invited to the Zoom call. All the roles I've been in in my life, I was actually kind of nervous to even do this <laughs> with you guys. But the more you, the more you practice, the more you apply yourself, the more you mm -hmm. can do it. It's going to be better in the end. So, to anyone that's, to everyone that was watching or like listening to us for the past. Four to five minutes. I just hope that um, everyone, even the leaders, um, was taking notes. Um, note takers are the money makers. No, note takers are not the money makers. Applied note takers are the money makers. So you're mm -hmm. in a role, whether leader or non leader, that will expand even after college. Hold up. Who is this called? Please stop. No, no, no. <laughs> so the more you listen and soak in information, the more you'll have to apply them and then grow. Everyone is great. I'm sorry, Brian. I'm not bad. Everyone, everyone is great. You won't be on this earth if you earth if you didn't have a purpose. So when you figure out your why, figure out that why and then run with it. When you run with it, give it 110 percent, and you'll be successful in anything that you do. That's all I got. Thank you. So, um. I, I I took some notes on this question, um, but um, it's a, it may be a little long winded, so bear with me. Um, the the first thing is, uh, if I could give any advice, is be humble. I know that sounds cliche, but as a leader on campus, you know you got to understand that every leader doesn't start on a platform. Mm -hmm. um, usually, the best leaders are the ones that start off sitting in the back learning as much as they can, soaking up as much information as they can. And they're having those character building moments. So when they're, when they're going through that process of like soaking in the information and learning and watching and observing, they actually are ready when they are called, um, you know, to be a leader. And a leader is always constantly trying to uh, soak up um, as much as knowledge and also wisdom. Um, and they, they, they never feel like they have arrived. That's why they're always trying to soak up as much information. And, and also an, another important thing is they exalt, uh, they exalt those around them who are, who are, uh, who are also getting success because a leader will, you know, they will do just that. Um, a leader is not intimidated by that. Um, a leader is, is always trying to push those, you know, they say the best teachers teach themselves out of a job. So mm -hmm. as a leader, you know what I'm saying, you have to, you have to be able to do that. Um, because leaders don't, real leaders want to be effective, not famous. You know what I'm saying? There, there's a big difference between being effective and famous. Um, and also another quote uh, that I uh, somewhat wrote down um, was, uh, take one day at a time, my mother um, gave me this analogy uh, about the dirt and the seed. Um, as a leader, you are going to go through some tough times. People are going to talk about you. People are going to hate you. People are going to, in my case, throw stuff at you. Um, <laughs> some people are, are just going to not like a lot of decisions that you make. But um, as, a, as, as you, the seed, you have to stay grounded. And when people are, when those issues are throwing dirt, when, uh, uh, when those issues are, you know, feel like it's throwing dirt on your name, when people are throwing dirt on your name, 
you got to look at the scientific background of what the purpose of dirt is. Dirt provides nutrients and minerals for the seed to grow. So all those times where you're having tough times and you're going through those dirty down dog days, that's nothing but dirt and character building for you to grow. So, and my mother will always tell me, don't uproot your seed. Don't uproot yourself. Don't run from the leadership position because you'll never see what you can blossom into. So that's my encouragement to all leaders today. Don't run from the leadership position. Embrace it. Embrace your flaws. You're going to mess up. It's not your job to be perfect. It's your job to be the best you can be. You're going to mess up. Always seek wise counsel. And, 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 and again, to piggyback off my first comment is uphold your posture. Wow, I really love that analogy. That's well like a right. Well said. Mm hmm. Ashley or Angel, do you have any advice? So I think my best advice to all current leaders and to future leaders is to never be afraid to use your voice. When mm -hmm. I first took on a leadership role in the Newman Players, I had some big shoes to fill from the president that came before me, and expectations were set pretty high for me in my first year as president. And I wanted to implement some new things in our club and I'm happy to say that I was able to do a lot of the things that I envisioned for us, but it wasn't without struggling and fighting along the way because people were pushing back saying this isn't how we usually do it. But I felt that I needed to stand my ground because you can't expect to grow without change. And one thing I really want to say is be the change you want to see mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to stand up for what you feel is right. Perfect. Thank you. Angel, do you have any? Honestly, my like my words of encouragement would be don't don't be scared. Like, cause I know personally for me, I was really scared about taking leadership positions because I know how time consuming they can be. And last semester I was like working a lot. So I was just like, I don't even think I have the time to do that on top of my academics. But it's all about time management. That's it's never gonna like stop being about time management in any aspect of life. It's just about what you make time for, what you prioritize. Um get a planner honestly just make a planner put everything that you need down into it and make sure you still make time for yourself to properly take care mm -hmm. of your own mental health and it'll be fine everything will work out i agree time management's the biggest key and as well as like being a leadership really helps you get out of your comfort zone because i i know for me personally i was like that little quiet freshman that like didn't really do much but once i started getting involved like and honestly, it was the best thing I ever did and could do for myself. Like, it really started getting me out of my comfort zone. Like, it got me to meeting new people and, like, getting connections with, like, the faculty. So, like, honestly, being a leader is one of the best things I've ever decided to do. It helps a lot. It's a really good – like, it's really good. I don't even know. It's, it's, like, honestly an amazing opportunity. So, if you have that opportunity, I would take it and grab it and go with it. And like Nafi said, follow that analogy. That's a really great analogy to go by. all right so that was the end of our panel um thank you for joining this year's 2020 night league conference we hope to see you for the rest of our sessions and events that we have offering during the fall semester if you would like to participate please be sure to register and receive all workshop links have a great evening everyone before, before you get off um i'm going to drop my instagram in the chat right now so if anyone needs to reach out um i'll be happy to provide any I will, I will be available for anyone just um that's my Instagram message drop and one more thing just to add on everyone thank you for having me on again um for anyone that's the people that's listening to us if you can just take one little thing from what each of the leaders just spoke of for the past hour take that and apply it that's all I'm gonna say just take that and apply it because not everyone's going to remember everything that we said, but if you can remember beats and pieces and then apply them, it's going to make it's going to it's going to make you much better in the long run. So that's all I got to say.